separated, communities are dismantled, people are alien, alienated, and um, you know, what are the results of that? And violence is one of those things. And um, when you're looking at, I mean, I, it's interesting to come into a conversation about fair wages and things like that, because I mean, who's going to, I mean, there, there are alternatives and not all of them are good. I mean, you can go out there and be on the streets and make quite a bit of money. And I mean, that's glamorized. So, you know, I can go make 500 bucks one night doing this, or I can be at McDonald's working for $7 an hour. I mean, those are choices that people have to make, and I think one of the results of those choices going in the, bad, the wrong direction is violence. So that's what I kind of want to illustrate with this, this show. So um, that's that's the basis of what I do. And um, well, unfortunately, the show is has ended. Um, I was downtown on Spring Street um, over there next to Sire Street, Rose Lane, um, which ironically, a few incidents ha incidents happened while the show was opening, open, and while I was you know walking people around the gallery. I mean, there were a couple shootings. So it became all too real, and of course, this is not something that's new to Charleston, it's ongoing, and, um, which is why the project won't stop you know, at this exhibition. I mean, just coming into this realm, and I see the impact that I can have on people, the, the attention I got for this show was beyond expectation. I mean, I mean, like I said, these guys, I mean, all of you being in this opportunity right now to really highlight something that, I mean, of course, all of us are aware of, but when you bring it into a realm of art that can compete with East Bay Street and Meeting Street, where well, all you see is Rainbow Road and, Mar <laughs> and Marscapes and things of that nature. I mean, it really gets people's attention. And um, I really encourage a lot of artists um, to really make work about, in a, in a social way, to really encourage people to take action and just really think about what's going on. I mean, I think of art as just a friendly reminder. Um, just how, you know, you guys, I mean, anyone pickets. I mean, you're out and you're active, you're being seen, and that's what art does. It's a visual to be seen, so. Is your work available on a website or Facebook page? Yeah, actually, uh, my work is my name, Fletcher, okay. in the number three, so Fletcher3.com. Okay. And um, that exhibition is up there, and then be, there's a synopsis, you know, what the show is about, a little more detail, if you want to read on that, so. Are you looking for sites to put your work on? Yeah, absolutely. So the difficulty, one difficulty of making work of this nature is it's not it's not sellable so much it's not commercial it's you know it's not something you would necessarily want to put in over your fireplace so in, in that, for that reason it's very difficult to find places that will show your work so what i did with this show is it's an alternative space it's not technically a gallery and that's something that i want to continue doing and i think that also encourages more people to participate because i i do think a lot of people are intimidated by the gallery gallery world I mean, just as far as the African American community, I know I can go into any given show, even this week, and I will see maybe one or two black people. And I think for even the younger generation, I think it's very important because a lot in those galleries is work about African American culture that you know kids aren't introduced to. So I think it's very encouraging to have it out of that realm where all those you know those I guess those obstacles fly right at the doors um, to have it in alternative spaces. So that's, that's what I want to continue doing. So. And the fact that the theme of your work was related to gun violence it leads us to have uh, Mahudin Dabaha talk a, a little bit about Black Lives Matter and what they're doing. Right on, right on. And so the focus uh, of the whole hoopla uproar was around police accountability, police violence, actually getting into the system and actually having some community power to say, you can't do this anymore. To actually be able to do that, we needed to be organized and we needed to be able to actually take account of what's going on in our community and to be able to get our own data set so we can draw our own stories, create our own narratives of what's going on. That work is a lot of work and requires a lot of hands, so we need more hands on that. So we kind of pulled out for a second and looked a little bit more at the factors that are surrounding this police accountability. School to prison pipeline right now is becoming like the focus and really zeroing in and understanding the quality education piece and its relationship to living wages, 
really creates an environment where somebody might have to be unsupervised uh, or not, not able to achieve getting their GED or, or um, maybe being labeled in school in such a way that they are now candidates to be profiled within their community because they have this time and space to go around and do whatever they're going to do. And so we want to create a narrative right now. That's where we're at right now. We want to create a narrative where we can actually work together and build these movements together. So we're all in the same zone. Um, the most important piece right now is actually being able to have the intergenerational conversations so we can move intellectual, financial, and social capital around into the movement so folks that are raising up and standing up right now can have a job, a way to actually support this work so we can have printing money and printing funds so we can actually have some media and, and actually be able to kind of really create a buzz for our generation around it so we can pay DJs to come out um, so we can rent venues, so we can actually speak to our generations, so we can speak to what's going on. We need to have these conversations, these intergenerational conversations, because the torch that we're taking right now is a torch that has been long and hard fought for by people that are not in, in this room anymore, and some people that are in this room. We would like to receive that torch, but we need to actually have, a, 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 we need to do work together, and we need to trust each other a little bit more. And so. That's where we are, is, is a deep cultural work. It's no longer the buzz of Black Lives Matter, the movement. Any place you go around the country right now that has buzz around it, it's because there's something that's happening on the ground right now. Either somebody just got shot or killed and people are still buzzing off of it, or it's transformed into something around a local issue. And so they've taken the energy from it and put it and really kind of helped bolster what is going on on the ground that's really going to gravitate to people's uh, attention and energy. We need to do the same thing here in Charleston. Um, so again, it's a hashtag, it's a brand, it's something that will capture attention. It, we already have songs out. We already have t-shirts printed up. Like, it's, it's there. Now we need to put some substance behind it. That substance is not going to come from a, a group of people in a room like this just saying, all right, we should do this, this, and that. It's going to come from us being able to actually engage the community in some greedy conversation, hold space to hear what the intergenerational dialogue is all about, what that discourse is all about, what the classism within that is all about, what the colorism within that is all about, for us to really tease out some pieces that maybe kind of crumbled um, the movement uh, that, that really kind of, uh, kind of brought the civil rights in and really start to kind of heal up some of those conversations and have those conversations. Right now, if we even want to talk about quality education within Charleston County, we can, we can say all day how the numbers will directly uh, lead to DJJ, will lead to interactions with the system and whatnot. And so why not start at the root and start to look around quality education? We start looking around quality education, what do we see? All right, suspensions, expulsions, achievement gaps. Well, okay, where are parents? Oh, parents gotta work. They work, why can't, why they gotta work? Because they have to work two or three jobs, right? And so it's a really easy narrative for us to see, and we have to be able to tell that song together. That's something that Black Lives Matter really can offer this movement, is to be able to be a big megaphone and say, what song do y'all wanna sing? All right, we're gonna sing this song now. And, and that's what we can do. Uh, but we definitely need the support for the youth that are arising because we can, we can be that huge megaphone. We have tactics and we have tools that no generation before us has used. We know how to use them for a lot of nonsense, but we haven't had the challenge, the motivation, and the support to actually challenge ourselves to use it in a different kind of way. And so that's what we really need the most of right now, is, is really support support to actually get this work done. Wes? Hey, how you doing, Wes? Oh, Wes. Wes. Wes.